Welcome to the first video in the Boomerang 2D tutorial series. In this video, we're going to install Boomerang 2D, configure it, and get it up and running with our demo content. After that, we'll take a look at the various editors and get an idea of the general workflow that you'll be using to create your own content within the Boomerang 2D framework. So let's get started. The first thing that we'll want to do is go to the Unity Asset Store and find Boomerang 2D. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. On this page, we'll click Add to My Assets and I'll bind it to your account. Once that's done, this button will say Open in Unity, but we're not going to use that button. Instead, we're going to create a new project using the Unity Hub. You can use either the 2D or 3D core, it won't matter, and we'll just name our project. I'll call mine Boomerang 2D Tutorial and click Create Project. Here we go, we have a blank project all set up. We can delete this Scenes folder because we won't be using it. To install Boomerang 2D, we'll go to Window, Package Manager, and we'll change the drop down list into My Assets. We'll see a list of assets that we've added, and we'll click on the Boomerang 2D framework. At the bottom right, there'll be a button that says Download if you haven't yet, but once you do, it'll change to Import. And here we are. When this window finally pops up, we'll want to make sure that we're including every folder in this directory. Later, when you're going to create your own content, you may want to uncheck the content folder, as this contains all of the demo content that comes with the Boomerang 2D framework. For now, we'll leave it checked for this tutorial. Once that finishes, we can close this window. We now have one folder in our assets called Boomerang 2D Framework. Inside of it, we have two more folders called Content and Framework. Framework is where all of the logic for the Boomerang 2D Framework lives. And Content is where all of the content you create through the various editors will live. If we look in Content, we'll see that we have folders for things like Actors, Audio, Bitmap Fonts, Maps, and so on. Inside of each of these folders are some JSON files and some image files depending on the asset type. Let's open the Boomerang 2D scene in the root folder. This scene comes with only one game object with two scripts attached to it. The first is the Boomerang Reference Database, and the other is a Start Demo Game script. The Boomerang Reference Database is a catalog of all of the assets you've created through the various editors. If we expand this out, we'll see references to all the different kinds of content that we have. For example, actor sprites, weapons, maps, and so on. This script is mandatory and helps the Boomerang 2D framework find all of your assets during runtime. The next script is a start game script. Let's take a look at the demo script that comes with Boomerang 2D framework. This script is only two lines long. The first one is required and initializes the framework. This is done with just Boomerang 2D .initialize framework. Once we've initialized the framework, all we have to do is load a map, and that map will automatically load any actors, HUDs, or other objects that are included with that map scene. Because this start demo game script is included inside of the framework folder, you'll probably want to create your own and put it in the root folder of content. Then we attach that to our game object. Once we have a game object with those two scripts on it, all we have to do now is press play. You'll notice right away that we get a dialog box saying that there are no cameras rendering. Each layer of your map is captured with its own camera, and the Boomerang 2D framework takes each of those images and composites them into one single image and displays that to the screen. This process means that there's no one camera rendering for the display. We can remove this message simply by right-clicking the game tab and unchecking Warn if no cameras are rendering. The next thing that we'll want to do is click on Free Aspect and make sure that we have VSync clicked. And with that, our demo content is completely up and running. Occasionally, you may notice that while playing your game, the frame rate is very low. For example, here. Typically, the reason for this is because we've still got the Boomerang 2D game object selected. If we unselect this game object, we'll notice that the speed returns to normal. When creating your own project, there's an optional final step that you can do to configure your project. We want to open the Game Properties CS file and look at the four top properties. The first property is our pixels per unit. Pixels per unit is how many pixels will fit per unity unit. Here, for every one unit, we'll be fitting 16 pixels in there. Our next two properties are our aspect width and our aspect height. 16 by 9 is our typical widescreen format, and most retro games have a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Finally, the last property is how many units wide will fit on the screen. The default property is 20 units wide. And so what will happen is that we'll have 20 units with 16 pixels inside each of those units. If we multiply 16 by 20, that's a total of 320 pixels that will fit across the screen. This will be the internal resolution of our game project. Boomerang 2D will figure out the height of the internal resolution by using your aspect width and height. If we play our scene and look at the console, the first message that appears will show our render dimensions. 
In this example, our render dimensions are 320 by 180, and then that image is scaled to fit the full screen. If we were to change our units wide to 40 and play our scene, you'll see that our internal resolution is now 640 by 360, and we have a very zoomed out look. This particular example looks a little janky because it was designed to fit a smaller resolution. In contrast, if we set that property to 10 and play our scene, we'll see that we're zoomed in. If we were to count the number of tiles on this screen, we'll see that there are 10 tiles wide. Of these four properties, pixels per unit is the only property that you must set before creating any of your content. You can change the aspect ratio and the units wide at any time that you want, but the pixels per unit is used when creating new assets. If you're to change your pixels per unit later, some of your assets might have to be re-imported or recreated altogether. And that's all it takes to get your Boomerang 2D project up and running. To recap, we created a new project, imported the Boomerang 2D asset, and then optionally, we modified some properties for the core game. Now that we've got our project up and running, let's look at what it takes to create some content. If we look under Tools, Boomerang 2D, we'll see we have a number of options here. The first two offer information about the Boomerang 2D framework, and then we have an option to rebuild the reference database. Most of the time, this will be done for you through the various editors. Every time you make a change to an actor or a map, it will automatically update the reference database. However, if you're using Explorer and adding new content or removing content straight from the directory structure, you will have to manually rebuild this database. We have a Game Flags editor, which works sort of as global properties. After that, we have an Actor Studio, which allows us to create and configure our own actors. Actors include entities like your player character, enemies, pickup items, moving platforms, and so on. After that, we have the Weapon Studio, which allows you to create complex bounding boxes for your actors. Next is the Tile Set Studio, which allows you to create tile sets, complete with their own colliders, and animations. Then we have our Map Editor, which unsurprisingly is used to create and edit maps. We have a Bitmap Font Editor that allows us to create bitmap fonts, a HUD Object Editor, which is used for creating UI elements, and a Dialog Content Editor, which will store text content for use with your HUD objects. You'll notice that some of these editors take up quite a bit of visual space, and so we can rearrange our layout to be a little bit more suitable with the Boomerang 2D framework. My preferred layout is to put the Hierarchy, the Project, and the Inspector tabs all in one panel, and then move the console here on the left. Additionally, you may want to put your Project tab in the middle. This layout gives us quite a bit of room to work within our editors. The Boomerang 2D framework doesn't require that you add anything to the scene manually, and is generally discouraged that you do so. The recommended workflow is to create all of your assets using these editors, and then use your start game script to load a map. The loaded map will automatically load in any of the actors, tile sets, and other assets that you've created right into the scene. The following videos in this tutorial series will go through each of these editors and asset types one by one, and I hope to see you there.